Hey guys, uh, this is Yoda. In this video, I'm going to be going over the Arclash Sorcerer's build in Diablo 4. Uh, currently, I'm level 76 on Hardcore, playing pretty much alone the whole time. Uh, and I think this build is really fun and is strong, if not the strongest Sorcerer's build. Uh, so let's get right into it. So we'll start with the basic skills. Uh, you're going to want to play Stable Currents and Arclash as your two main offensive skills, and then you're just playing every single defensive skill on the tree. The reason for that is that this is a melee build, and you're playing Sorcerer, so you're actually really squishy. Um, so you need all of your defensives, and also you're going to rotate through all of them to keep your shields up from one of your passives. Um, basically the theme is you just activate Unstable Currents, pour it in, and just start swinging your Arclash. And since there are a lot of synergies with basic attacks, uh, you have really high attack speed and that just spits out like a bajillion lightning skills. Uh, one of the main weaknesses is that when Unstable Currents is down, you're just swinging your Arclash and not much else going on. Uh, but it is still a really strong build, especially late game when you have enough CDR to make this work. Uh, so then we'll get into the items. Uh, so most of the legendary powers, honestly, are just bland multipliers that work with the build. Like, they don't really do anything that crazy. All of them are, are between, like, 15 to 25-ish percent damage increase. Uh, so there's nothing I would prioritize that much on legendaries. I'll go through them quickly here. Uh, for this, you have the barrier one. You pretty much also have barrier, so you're going to want that at max. Ball lightning circles around you. Uh, this one is actually probably your strongest one because uh, it causes you to have so many more extra hits and extra hits means more cracklings and more stuns and more procs, so that's really good. Uh, this one is one of your, also one of your most important ones. Basic skills grant 50%. This is a codex. Uh, you, can get, you can get it from the codex. Ideally, uh, you don't use your codex on this one. You just have like a, a, a real aspect that's imprinted. Unfortunately, I haven't found a good one yet. Um, so I'm stuck using the codex, but yeah, you want this at 30%. This is probably, these two are probably your strongest two legendary powers. Next we've got uh, Unstable Currents with a 20% chance to cast an extra shock skill. This one's not great. Uh, originally I thought it was going to be super strong, so I put it on my offhand, but it's not that good. I think I would replace this with Aspect of Control, but I'm actually bugged right now. I can show you guys real quick. The Occultist is over here. Uh, yeah, so I want to switch, I would, I would switch this to aspect of control, but it says I can't, like, for done it for some reason, I'm pretty sure it's a bug. Anyway, I would switch this to aspect of control if possible. Uh, next we have skills deal up to 20%, increased damage based on available primary resource. You don't have any spenders, so you're just perma at full resource the whole time, so this is basically just 20% though, on stop, or 18, because it's not perfect. Uh, next, the last offensive one is Chris skills with core skills, increase your attack speed. So we're not really playing any core skills, but this is you're gonna have you're gonna like your your unstable is gonna shoot out chain lightning and it's gonna crit. So this is twenty five percent attack speed. Attack speed is really good. Uh, next we have defensives. We're playing this armor one. It gives you fifty percent armor, but don't be fooled. This may say look like it gives you a lot of armor, but it's actually not that crazy because of armor dr. Like I'm already at armor dr without this. Armor contribution 50%. If your resistances aren't up to par, your armor doesn't really do anything. So this actually could be something else, but there's not that many good defensive traits. And this is like a max roll, so I'm just keeping it for when armor is not capped. Uh, we also have basic skills grant 2% damage reduction. Uh, this is fine to use as an imprint. You don't really need a, a high roll because you're basically just spamming Arclash the whole time. This should have perma off time. Uh, and on Helm, we have Ice Armor makes you unstoppable. Basically, if you're CC'd, you're not spamming your defensive abilities, which give you 30% barrier by default, and also have iframes and all that, so you're a lot squishier, so anything that makes you unstoppable is really strong. Those are legendary powers. Uh, next we'll go through the roles. So your most important role by far is cooldown reduction because of unstable currents, long ass cooldown. So that's gonna, that's gonna be on neck, as you can roll it on your offhand. It, offhands have it by default, but you can also roll it on them. So you can have like, this one's giving me like 25% CDR almost, it's crazy. And you can also have it on your headpiece. Uh, so yeah, you want max CDR rolls out of all those ASAP. Uh, the next important rolls are 
attack speed and a basic skill attack speed. So you can have just attack speed on your gloves, but then there's a lot of basic skill attack speed you can have. You can have one on your offhand, you can have it on your headpiece. Uh, those basically are the same as attack speed, but since it's basic skill attack speed, the game will allow you to give higher values than normal attack speed rolls. So those are really important. Uh, and then obviously there's the classic crit, crit damage, lightning crit damage. Uh, are the three best after that. And then there's vulnerable damage. Uh, so the way this game works, uh, almost all of the damage buckets are... All, it's almost all like the plus damage, like plus damage to... Plus lightning skill damage, shock skill damage, damage to injure, damage to elites. All that is in one bucket, except vulnerable damage and crit damage. So as much as possible, you want to have vulnerable and crit uh, on your rings. Like this, for instance, this ring has crit two crit rolls, which are going to be like multiplicative with crit, and eighteen percent lightning damage, which is additive. So you want to get as many multiplicative rolls as possible. Uh, so that's most of the rolls covered. Uh, weapons, obviously, you just want the highest possible roll. Uh, also, you're generally going to be wanting to using an, a setup with an offhand because, early, like I said earlier, offhands naturally have a lot of cooldown reduction, and two-handers can't roll cooldown reduction. And also, there's no legendary power that's crazy enough that you want to double it. That, like, it's worth dropping cooldown reduction to double it uh, on Sorceress. Okay, those are the items. Uh, let me go through the skill tree real quick. Skill tree. So a lot, I see a lot of build recommendations have most have like multiple points in certain skills. Uh, I actually don't do that. Okay, anyway, wait, let me fix this real quick. Okay, uh, I actually don't do that because the passives in this build are so strong. Uh, so first we have Arc Lash. Obviously, you want the CDR one. This got nerfed, so it's not great, but we still play it. Uh, we have points here in Chain Lightning because you can proc Chain Lightning from Unstable Currents and that gives you more crit on Chain Lightning and more correctly energy, so it's worth it. Uh, and then we have Potent Warding. We're taking pretty much every defensive skill possible. Uh, next here, we're specced into every single defensive one. Flame Shield upgrades and Frost and Ice Armor upgrades aren't really that good, but Teleport gives you DR here. on Spring Teleport, really good. Even though this nerf is still really good. Uh, and Frost Nova gives you Vulnerable. Your only source of Vulnerable, which is very important. Like, Vulnerable damage is insane. You want as much Vulnerable as possible. Uh, okay, then we have Glass Cannon. I'm playing Hardcore. Normally you would max this because it's multiplicative, but I'm playing Hardcore, so I only have one point. Uh, in Elemental Attunement, you only need one point. You're going to proc this every 10 seconds, guaranteed. Uh, so there's no point in putting more. Uh, next, we have Precision Magic, Lucky Hit. Uh, this is not that necessary, but we're playing Lucky Hit build, so this is, these are decently valuable points. We also have Conjuration Mastery. You notice I'm not skilled into any Conjuration skills, but uh, Conjuration Mastery, when we cast Unstable Currents, this Conjuration Mastery can often get up to like 10 stacks, which is 30% multiplicative, which is crazy for like one skill point or three skill points. We definitely play this. Uh, next, we have Blind the Elements. This one's not great because you're kind of just in elite combat the whole time when you're fighting. Uh, but we needed to get to here. Protection is your most important uh, passive talent. We have er every single one of these skills except Arc Lash is a cooldown. So you're permanently, you're basically permanently proccing this barrier. And your goal is to have 100% barrier, up barrier up time, not only for like the legendary power that gives you extra damage, but also because like you're playing a sorcerer, so you're squishy. If you don't have a barrier up, you're in danger of getting one shot. Uh, so this is your most important talent defensively. Next, uh, we're playing the enchants. Oh, I should have gone over enchants. We're playing flame shield obviously because it's hardcore and firebolt enchantment, uh, mostly because there's a lot of burning synergies both in the paragon tree and in items. There's like damage reduction from burning, basically both in both places, and those are really valuable. So we're playing frost firebolt for that, and the enhancements kind of suck. So anyway, we're gonna be applying burning. Um, this gives you 30% increased crit damage. Crit damage is pretty good. This talent, like by these four points are like actually not that crazy, but there's not much else to spend them in. And I prefer that to leveling up different skills because leveling up skills doesn't really like increase damage since you have like so many damage sources. Leveling up one skill won't change much in compared to like giving yourself crit damage. 
Uh, we have Ball Lightning. We have the Wizard's Ball Lightning Rune because we want to spawn Crackling Energies. We need Crackling Energies to proc Overflowing Energy. This is one of our main sources of Crackling Energy. So we have this here, and we also have uh, this one. Fits with Shocks will have a chance from Crackling Lightning, and we also have the Chain Lightning one. Those are our main sources of Crackling Energy, and we only need Crackling Energy for this Overflowing Energy, but it is still really important. Okay, then we have this one, which I talked about, and the stun. Uh, stun is, we're going to be proccing this a lot. So, yeah, we're proccing this from a talent down here. Uh, this is one of your like main damage sources, actually. Okay, next we have Unstable Currents. Uh, obviously, we want all three. This talent kind of sucks, to be honest, but like it's only one talent point, so you might as well. Yeah. Uh, okay, next we have Crit. Crit is good. PR is good. Uh, Shocks have a 9% chance of stun. This is very important. You need to max this ASAP because it procs this and it also lets your R Clash go ham. Uh, and then also, this is not as important, but like it's pretty good for Nightmare Dungeon speedrunning. And obviously, we have the Capstone Overflowing Energy. Um, when you're like the lower level and you don't have like a maxed out build like I do, or I mean, I'm not even maxed out, but you don't have like an endgame build, you can still play, you can play like Veer's Master or Shatter here. Uh, those types of builds are not dependent on unstable currents. You basically have to play the game outside the stable currents. Uh, and Shatter and Veers are actually decent for that. Hopefully, like, you're not in that state for too long, but when you are, these two talents are really good, especially Shatter. Okay. Uh, Paragons. So, bad news. Let's see if I can access it. Okay, I can't access it from here, but every, literally every single legendary node is complete garbage for our build. It's one of the main weaknesses of our build. Uh, so we're basically picking these boards based on like their rare nodes. And what's good in a rare node is attack speed. So we want as attack speed one. And we also want DR. So like, why am I, oh, yeah, I didn't take it. We also want DR uh, and sockets and Vuln damage. So we have Vuln damage. So so far we've gone through attack speed and Vuln damage. Those are two of our best stats. Next I'm heading towards like damage reduction from elites. Then this is going to be damage reduction from burning, damage to burning, burning synergies. But basically you just want a path towards good rares, good rare nodes, and also like good so like sockets that are surrounded by the correct stats. Uh, this I'm going to end up putting a... I'm going to end up putting reinforced. Actually I can already do it. Putting reinforced here. Here is that it's the same as tactician almost, but then tactician is a little bit better because it boosts these two, I guess. So yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter where they go, but reinforce tactician and reinforce are going in these two, and then I also have the vuln damage one and imbiber because this one has a lot of willpower. Uh, so yeah, paragon that's paragon boards. Unfortunately, I hope really hope they fix this. Like, literally, every single legendary node is complete dog water. So we're not playing it, sorry for language. Uh, we're just pathing through for rares. And uh, like the vulnerable damage ones are the best, and the attack speed ones are good too. Okay, so that's the build. Uh, let's try to get into some gameplay here. Let me check my sigils. Uh, we have a core dragon. Yeah, this will be a fine one. So this is a 27. The mobs are going to be level, I think the most of the mobs are level 81. They'll be like five levels higher than me, which is. About where you want to be for optimal XP farming. I cannot see that yet. Uh, one thing to note while I'm walking there, while you're leveling, you're not going to be able to like have really high cooldown reduction on unstable currents, probably because like it's you already get those rolls. Uh, but what you're going to want to do is play. You're going to want to like not play ice armor and put instead spender. Potentially, you can also put hydra on your bar. Hydra is actually really strong in terms of base damage. It just has really weak uh, scaling, right? It doesn't. It just all it does is damage. It doesn't proc anything. Doesn't have any synergies. So. While you're leveling, either you should play the sh Ace Shards build, or just put Chain Lightning and Hydra on your bar and pray, which is what I did. I think it probably you're probably better off playing Ice Shards when you're like lower level. 
At this point in the game, I think my build is stronger, but vulnerable damage is really broken and ice shards procs it a lot more reliably. So I'm not sure actually which is stronger. But my build's way more fun for me anyway. And I think my build's definitely better for solo play. Because for solo play you need to be somewhat tanky and ice shards I don't think can take all the all the defensive passives. Really want to pop on these unstable currencies. Even even at like my uh, gear level, all of the most of the unstable sy current synergies have been removed. So I'm just like I still gated by CDR. So I usually don't want to pop until I get to the first elite pack. You notice with the passive overflowing currents or overflowing whatever it's called, uh, I do a decent CDR. Like I kill the pack and it's already up. You also notice that Frost Move is a major offensive cooldown, actually, because it applies Vuln. Vuln damage is insane. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Mobility leaves a little bit to be desired. Not quite as mobile as a rogue. Also knowing that I have trouble killing, like, these random monolith packs, but... In terms of fighting elites, this pack, this build is pretty strong. Remember that these mobs are, like, five levels up, so... Yeah, I think the optimal XP farm is actually three levels up, but five levels up is fine. It's not like you're gonna always be able to control the correct Nightmare Sigil level. This dungeon is not that great either. D density is kind of bad. I just went in a circle. That's okay. The main purpose is to showcase the build, not the... What is going on here? Oh, I spawned elites on, my, on the chest, or? Yeah, that's what happened. Hey, just pop your cooldowns, go in. Try to always have a barrier. If you ever don't have a barrier, you are in danger. Some cool tricks too. Uh, teleport and Flame Shield have iframes on them. They basically make you invulnerable. So you can break CC with them. And if you see the boss like charging up a big attack, you can just stand there and hit him and then push those buttons when, he, when the attack goes off. Oh, this is... Notice sometimes they live past your initial burst, which can be annoying. But right now I'm tanky enough, I can just follow them. If you're not this tanky, you kind of you sometimes you have to kite and wait for wait for cooldowns to come back. But like this key is kind of low, at least for my build. So I don't have to really run away. I can just keep fighting them. Astral Wand. Wait, so Tanky can just take Volcanic to the face. That's crazy. Yeah, this dungeon's actually not that good because the density is really low except for these two rooms. You need to walk a lot to get to them. But. This is sigil I had that I wanted to test out. They live past the initial burst, but I since it like one thing I noticed is that the pass the, the keystone passive the one that gives you CDR is really strong when you're fighting packs of elites because it'll like your crackling lighting reduces your cooldown the more elites it hits. So if you're fighting like five elites at the same time, you're getting the max CDR from it. So you pretty much have per mob time fighting big elite packs, but if you're forced to fight like non-elites or bosses, then you're gonna have downtime and sometimes you actually have to kite. But for situations like this, usually the uptime is pretty good. So yeah. Remember that I do have like 40 plus percent CDR, so these guys are annoying the ones that poured out because you have to chase them with some melee build. I actually do have downtime here. But it's not that long. What's going on? I'm not taking damage. All the blood boils here.
Apparently it's not worth stopping for like these flying elites, but the the melee ones you can kill. You don't have to think too much when you're fighting these. Just make sure you like are trying to dodge the really obvious stuff and perma have a barrier up. You can you can probably get hit by a lot more mechanics than most other classes with this build. But still like, you know, especially on hardcore, don't test your luck. If possible. Saving your teleport and your mostly saving your flame shield for like scary spots is really is gonna be is a lot better than just dodging. Because if you a lot of times if you dodge you have to leave melee, leaving melee is a DPS loss. You'd rather just flame shield through it if possible. You can survive doing that. Downtime here. If this key was a little bit higher, I'd probably be kiting uh, with downtime, but it's like not high enough to force me to do that, especially with my all four defensive skills unlocked. You can also use your teleport or flame shield, or even ice shield actually, with the with the legendary power. Break slows. Any form of CC, you can use those to break. I want to kill this guy. I'm going to bring him to the blood boil. There's a lot of mobs here. That is good for my build. Another thing you notice is your damage uh, when they're unstoppable is actually a lot lower. Because you can't proc your stuns. If you're playing Aspect of Control like I normally am too, then it, your damage goes way down when they're unstoppable too. Yeah, I'm not killing that. That guy, I'm not gonna bother killing. If he follows, actually, he's gonna take a lot. We'll see what happens. You notice, even when unstable currents falls off, you still keep the the lightning spears and the ball lightnings that you summoned. You can still do damage for quite a little bit after it falls off, and then hopefully, like by the time those are feeding, the currents is back, so your damage doesn't actually fall off that much. This should finish the dungeon here, there's two blood boils here. Our Clash CDR actually hurt a lot when they nerfed it. When you're fighting elites, it's fine, but when you're just fighting like white mobs, it's not great. Okay, that is the dungeon showcase. Um, yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you guys are all enjoying Diablo 4, and I will see you in the next one.